to the Latham's List of NBA edition for this week. Um, and then we'll talk about some more NBA-related stuff a little bit after. Um, so this, is get, this was tough for me to do. Uh, I wanted to try to take some stuff with a grain of salt and some stuff kind of opened my eyes, you know, because teams like the Bulls, I, I mean, maybe they're a little bit better than I thought they were coming into the season. I, I think a week ago, uh, I can double check real quick. I, a week ago, I had them as a six seed. And I mean, maybe they end up like that. But when I predicted the beginning of the season, they had them as a six seed and they look, they're looking good so far. 3-0 and start to the season for the Bulls. But all right. Uh, starting at the 10 spot, I'm going to put the New York Knicks. Um, they played the Magic twice and the and the Boston Celtics on opening night. And they um, had a crazy overtime game against Boston. Jalen Brown had like 46 or something that night. Um, I was able to watch that game. Uh, if you didn't see that game, definitely look it up on YouTube. At the end of that game, those players were just trying to put one foot in front of the other. They were so tired. It was it was crazy to watch how how much like heart that they were giving out on the floor. Um, you know, all those players to try to get that win. But the the Knicks were able to pull out in that one. Um they've looked impressive. Uh Julius Randle is picking up right where he was last year. Um Campbell Walker was their big addition in the summer. I didn't think it was a very, you know, impressive addition. Uh, ever since he's left Charlotte Kemba really hasn't been anything special to me in my eyes. When he was in Boston, he had, you know, glimpses, he had moments, but really I thought he was more of a hindrance to Boston than anything. When I watched them in the playoffs last year, um, Kemba was just, you know, he was taking a lot of shots. He's being a shot taker instead of a shot maker. You know, shot makers take a lot of shots, hit their shots. Shot takers take a lot of shots, miss a lot of shots. So he was doing that last year for, for Boston in the playoffs, and I didn't think... It was the greatest pickup for for the Knicks, but hey, uh, he'll have his moments this year. Um, other than that, Mitchell Robinson's looked pretty good for them defensively. Um, I know some people were speaking pretty highly of him to start the season as a as a defensive of the year candidate, defensive player of the year candidate. He's looked good. Um, and the other night they hit uh, twenty four threes or something like that. They broke their franchise record for made threes in a game. Um, so they definitely got shooters, and Julius Randle's kind of at the helm of that. Uh, I was a little bit of a Julius Randle hater last year. Um, I still think he. I still don't think he's a number one guy. I don't think a team can win with him being the number one guy. But hey, I mean, you know, I've been wrong before. Uh, at the ninth spot, I'm gonna put the Pacers. Indiana's looked decent to start the year. Um, they play Milwaukee tonight, so I'll kind of get to see a little bit more around. You know how legit they are. I liked the Pacers coming in. I thought that. Um, I thought they'd be the, the team looking out. They'd be floating around that play-in range. Um, DeMontis Sabonis has started the year pretty strong. Uh, he's going to have a pretty big year, it looks like. And then Malcolm Brogdon, former Milwaukee Buck, is a stat sheet stuffer. I mean, he uh, they played uh, either last night or two nights ago. He, he struggled with shooting it from the field, but he was able to still put up like eight rebounds, eight assists. He, he's dishing the ball pretty well. Um, Chris Duarte is just balling, huh? He's averaging like maybe 22, 21 a game. Uh, he had 27 opening night, 19 the next game, 17 the game after that. He's, he's kind of balling. Um, yeah, he's looking like the steal of the draft for sure right now between, between, uh, uh, Jalen Green just had a monster game last night. Jalen Green had, he had 30, he went like eight for 10 from three. Um, big game from Jalen. Um, but at this point it, it had looked like Chris Duarte and the Orlando Magic's uh, Franz Wagner were kind of the two steals at the moment. Uh, Cade Cunningham, actually, you know, I'll give it a quick look because I don't know what, why Cade isn't isn't playing. Uh, give me just a second to look. Uh, I had meant to look and I just haven't looked at it yet. Um, oh wow. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so I'm seeing a, a report here. So he's got a sprained right ankle. It says he hurt it early in training camp. He didn't play in the preseason. And then it, it looks like it says Cade Cun in this, uh, let's see, in this article by Detroit, it says that Cade Cunningham 
uh, will spend some time in the G League before his debut, which is very, very interesting. Um, all right. So I, uh, I don't know how true that is, but he's got a. It looks like he's got a sprained ankle at this point. So Kate Cunningham hasn't really played. Uh, Jalen Green just had a good game last night. So Chris Duarte definitely looking like the steal of the draft at uh, you know, you know a week in. But he, I don't see why he would slow down at any point. Um, so the Pacers are looking pretty good. Miles Turner had, yeah, I think he had thirty uh, the other night as well. He has definitely opened up his his range. He can shoot the ball way better than he has uh, been in his past. So. Good for Miles Turner. It's good when, you know, good defensive rebounding bigs start to open up their game and they start to shoot the ball a lot more. Um, it just makes them better. It just spaces the floor out better, and it just makes them more valuable, you know. There's a huge difference between, like, a a Carl Anthony Towns and, like, a, a Rudy Gobert, per se, you know, because Cat can stretch the floor, and Rudy, you know, as elite of a paint defender as he is and as elite as a rebounder as he is, He's a little bit of a liability offensively just because, you know, he has to sit in the paint to score. You know, he's not going to be able to shoot any threes. Um, at the eight spot, I'm going to put the Bulls. Um, they haven't played the greatest opponents to start the season, but they are living up to the hype up to this point. Um, I believe they play tonight. Um, Lonzo Ball has been shooting the ball really well. Um, Caruso... Coming off the bench has been a really big spark plug for them. Uh, Zach Levine had 33 and 31 the first two games for them. Uh, tonight they play the Raptors. So a pretty big uh, performances from all those new acquisitions. I think DeRozan's been calmly just putting in, you know, 22, 23 a game. So good, you know, all those additions that they added this year um, have been doing exactly what they should have been. And the Bulls are going to be making some noise. Uh, last year's uh, lottery pick for them, Patrick Williams, He's making that starting lineup because it's it's Lonzo, DeRozan, um, Patrick Williams, uh, Vucevic. Who am I forgetting here? Lonzo, DeRozan, Vucevic, Patrick Williams, and someone else. Oh, Zach Levine. Wow, brain fart. Um, so Patrick Williams is getting in that in that lineup with those veteran guys, and uh, he's he's looking pretty well, shooting the ball pretty good and stuff. So the Bulls are looking. Uh, a little bit scarier than I thought they were, maybe. Uh, at the 7, I'm going to put the Hawks. Lost a close one last night um, to Cleveland. Cleveland has been a little bit of a eye-opener for me, better than I thought they were going to be. Um, that tall ball <laughs> that they're doing in a small ball league is looking pretty good for them. So, definitely, Atlanta, at, on opening night, Trey had 14 assists, 19 points, somewhere around there. They're just... Atlanta, by far, I think when you look around, I was talking about Denver's depth, right, of guys that can just kind of get buckets and be, you know, efficient for them. Uh, the Atlanta just has a lot of guys that can make a lot of shots. Um, obviously, you have Trey Young, right? Um, John Collins is a, for his size, I just can't believe, John Collins is a really, he's an undersized four, and he gets a whole lot of rebounds. Um, for being such an undersized guy. Uh, he's got crazy bounce. Him and Trey Young are uh, on, honestly kind of the perfect combination, the two of them together, um, with Trey Young's passing ability. Clint Capella, again, that's another guy. They just have so many pieces that fit perfectly in, uh, for the Hawks. They just they all mesh so well because Clint Capella is not going to do anything but rebound really well because he's the, been the league's leading rebounder a couple of years now. He's going to rebound the ball really well, and he's going to catch lobs. And so that's what he does, and that's what Trey Young does really well is he, you know, uh, play makes, he uh, passes the ball around really well for other team, his other teammates and stuff. So between him, Clint Capella, John Collins, uh, there, John Dre Hunter has had a good start to the season, and then Cam Reddish comes off the bench for them. He's averaging like 20. Cameron Reddish. You know, he got lost in the, in the draft a couple years ago because of the RJ and, and Zion. They both went to the same school as him, right? And he got lost in that draft for a little bit. Um, I, for, I can't remember if he was injured or something, maybe, for his rookie year. Didn't make a whole lot of noise. But this year, he's getting extended minutes. He made, he made he was getting minutes last year towards the end of the their playoff run a year ago, and he was balling last year, too. And this year, it looks like they're definitely going to start giving him more opportunities, and he is definitely looking like a bit of a monster um start the season but they their last game they went one two three four five six 
seven, eight, nine, ten. They went 11 deep their last game. And everyone is coming into the game and scoring. I mean, they had every single guy that came in the game had four or higher. So, I mean, that's just crazy as far as people that they trust with the ball, people getting shots up. They're just so deep in Atlanta. And that's uh, pretty scary for, you know, opposing teams. They're, they're deep and young is the other crazy part. So they're either going to, these next couple of years, while they have guys on rookie contracts and stuff, they're they got a lot of talented players that they're not going to be paying a lot of money. Um, down the line, it looks it's going to look a little bit iffy for, for Hawks fans because a couple of those guys are going to want to get paid and you only have so much money in a salary cap league. But uh, for now, the Hawks start out the year looking pretty strong for me. I like I like their chances to finishing at the three spot, like I said at the beginning of the year. Um, at the six, I'm going to put the Warriors. Steph Curry is a man-possessed, bro. That guy is absolutely crazy. He had, I, I was watching their game the other night, he had 26 or something in the first quarter. It was bananas. That guy is just crazy, especially when he's playing in Oracle, Roracle as I like to call it. That man just goes crazy. He is, he is on a man, uh, opening night he had 16, 10, and 10 or something like that. And he's like, yeah, man, I, I played like garbage. I played like trash. Came out the next game and hit like seven threes in the first quarter. It's crazy. I mean, Steph Curry. I, I thought the Warriors had a shot maybe to be, you know, a good team, but geez, Louise, Steph Curry can just fill it up. He if if <laughs> I put it on my social media the other day, so Steph Curry has a chance to maybe just backpack the Warriors into the playoffs and make it make a deep run, maybe. You know, they, they beat the Lakers and they beat uh Sacramento, I think, last night, but they beat the Lakers on opening night. And definitely made some noise for sure. They beat they beat the Lakers without Steph Curry having twenty points. You know, Jordan Poole has been a great uh, addition for them. You, some people might be able to real uh, like uh, recognize that name. Jordan Poole played for Michigan a couple of years ago. Hit a huge game winning shot for Michigan in the March Madness tournament. Uh, they took a shot with him, drafting him with a lottery pick a couple of years ago, and he is definitely looking like a a legit bucket getter in this league. So. The Warriors looking good to start the season. At the five spot, I'll put the Lakers dropping down, probably from what people would probably think of maybe a one or two range. I didn't like the Lakers situation coming into the season. I didn't like... I didn't... I wasn't a fan of all the moves they made, okay? They made all the moves to get these older fellows, and I, I sound kind of dumb saying this right now because Carmelo Anthony had 28 last night. I didn't, you know, I didn't think that they couldn't have good games, you know? I, I think Dwight Howard is a championship sh uh, roster center. I think Dwight Howard is a great guy to have on your roster if you're trying to win a championship because he's a great backup big. He still defends the paint really, really well. He still rebounds really, really well. And, you know, he's going to finish his close shots around the basket. I still like the additions to the team. These guys, the team is made up of a bunch of guys that would be great on a championship roster, but not necessarily be a championship roster. You know what I mean? If you put Carmelo on a Denver, if you put Dwight Howard on a on a Milwaukee, if you put um, Rajon Rondo on like a Brooklyn, those guys would be great additions to title contending teams. But I don't like them as a team as a whole. Right, already in game two, Dwight Howard, Anthony Davis getting in arguments on the sidelines. No, nothing came out to about what they were arguing about, but they're already you know, getting in arguments on the sidelines. Opening night, they lost to the Warriors at home. They're playing seven of their first nine at home. Already lost their first two. And then uh, they played a heck of a game last night against um, the Memphis Grizzlies. I watched that whole game too. Memphis, John Morant had 40 and 10. Right at the end, uh, got fouled on a three as they were down three with like 2.3 left on the clock. Made the first two free throws, missed the second one. They lose by a point. So, I mean... The NBA said, "Here, we'll give you the first seven games, you know, seven of your first nine at home. Let's let's go ahead and, and subtly throw the Lakers a, a hot start to the season, and it has not started the way it should have. And then, so like I said, I, I didn't like the addition of all these older players, and then I didn't, and then they signed or they trade for Russell Westbrook, and I was just like, ah, you know, yeah, that, that is not that's not the move. I just didn't, you know, a Malcolm Brogdon." I said it last week would be a perfect fit 
in Milwaukee, or excuse me, in uh, Los Angeles. If Malcolm, Brog- Ma- Malcolm Brogdon, if, if there's guys like Malcolm Brogdon, Lonzo Ball, uh, De'Arian Fox, those guys are like point guards. Those guys are lead your offense kind of guys. Not necessarily the best scorers or anything. That's that's not a point guard's job. The point guard's job is to facilitate the offense, be a quarterback for an offense. And I don't like, you know, I love Russell Westbrook. Big fan of him growing up. I tried to play a lot like Russell Westbrook with the same mentality and stuff growing up. But he, it doesn't make sense, you know, the the two of the, it just doesn't mesh well. Anthony Davis, LeBron, and Russell Westbrook. LeBron and Russell are kind of, you know, the same ball-centric type players. And it's going to be hard for the two of them. You know, you know, Russell's already not gone off to the greatest start. He almost had a triple-double on their, in their second game. But he's just not scoring the ball well and... It looks bad when Russell's taking shots and they're not going in because they could be other people taking better shots because there's so many better offensive players around him. Even, you know, Melo, LeBron, AD, there's so many better offensive weapons around him. It's just not the move for him to be the ball-centric guy. You know, I, I don't know. It's it's just a weird fit. I never really liked it when I heard it, and it's really not looking that good to start the season. Uh, but Lakers at the five. I'm going to put Brooklyn at the four. First couple of games, reaction without, um, (coughs) 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 sorry, first couple of games without Kyrie Irving, you know, haven't looked, they haven't looked bad. Um, Kevin Durant, I think was the Vegas favorite or might've been second to Luca for MVP. He's putting up MVP numbers for sure. They, the addition of Patty Mills has been pretty big for them. And I thought it was going to be. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, I thought it was going to be. I liked the addition, actually, of Patty Mills. I'm kind of quite surprised they don't start him, if I'm being quite honest. Um, but I, I'm also a huge fan of having a spark plug off the bench, and I understand why they have him coming off the bench. Um, so I'm going to say... They, for the circumstances that they're facing right now, there's, like, riots and stuff co- uh, happening outside Barclays Center of fans saying let let him play you know let him play let Kyrie play all this and that so I definitely understand you know there's just a lot of noise going on for them as as well as the Sixers I don't even have the Sixers on here and the Sixers they just have so much noise going on outside of the game but I'll get into that as well um so Brooklyn at the four Kevin Durant started the season really well uh Harden he was in an interview last night because they lost to the Hornets last night he felt he, the the rule was made for him is what he felt like a reporter felt like does he feel that the rule was kind of made around his game and he felt oh yeah he said oh yeah for sure he said he feels he talks to every ref before the start of the game and he says to the ref he says if it's a foul call it right he's like don't predetermine if it's going to be a foul or not and so he definitely hasn't had the greatest start to the season. And this was expected for guys like him, Chris Paul, uh, Trey Young. Without get, being able to do this, you know, the stupid flopping, you know, the stupid, you know, adjusting your body to get hit so you can get the foul type stuff. I love it. You know, as far as I know, except for James Harden, everybody loves this rule. It is a fantastic rule for the game. It's amazing. I love it so much because especially for me last year watching – James do this in the playoffs against Milwaukee and watching Trey Young do it against the Bucks in or in the finals or the playoffs last year and then watching Chris Paul do it in the finals Devin Booker it was so frustrating right to say you know the defensive player is doing everything that he can it's already hard enough to guard people in the NBA let alone with all these rules and then people and then the offensive player is just falling into you and getting fouls it was so frustrating to watch and so I'm so glad that they fixed it this year. It's been great, you know, rewarding a, def- a defender instead of an offensive player a little bit better. So they are – James Harden's still adjusting to that for sure. Uh, but they're looking good. I guess that's still week one. Uh, the three, I'm going to put ja- the Jazz. They haven't uh, put up anything crazy or anything like that. Uh, Donovan Mitchell hasn't even been playing great to start the season. Um They've just had, they just have a lot of, they're just in that same kind of position, kind of that like Atlanta's in. They just have a lot of depth. They, 
they there's a lot of guys on this roster. Who did they? Oh, they added uh, Eric Pascal from the Warriors. Um, that are just like I'm looking at their box score from the other day. Rudy was 16, Donovan was 16, Michael was 16, Jordan Clarkson with 18, Joe Ingles with 14, uh, Bogdanovich with 22. Just a whole lot of guys, right? That that was their strength last year. Donovan Mitchell doesn't have to. That, that's the crazy part about the Jazz is that Donovan Mitchell doesn't have to ball out for this team to play well. Uh, they added, oh, the, uh, that's right, they added Hassan Whiteside as well. So having two guys like Hassan Whiteside and Rudy Gobert, two guys that have led the league in blocks, you know, two defensive player of the year type caliber players in their in their backcourt is just, or that front court, that's just, you know, they've got a lot of pieces over there to make it, to try to make a run again this year. You know, a lot of noise around the Jazz is that they can't finish in the playoffs because they've played gr- uh, well in the regular season the last couple of years. They just can't finish in the playoffs, you know. Um, next up at the two spot, I'm going to put the Nuggets. They're two and zero to start the year. Uh, they were losing early to to the Phoenix Suns, and they came back and won that game. Jokic is looking like the Joker. Um, love to see the big man put up monster numbers like he has been. Uh, the fact that they were able to kind of, like I said, the Nuggets between the Nuggets, the Hawks, and the Jazz, just so much depth on these rosters. It just they are going to. They don't have to have their stars ball out every single night. Uh, once Jamal Murray gets back, that's going to help the the Nuggets out a lot. But I, I, you know, no, no worries for me so far for the Jet, for the Nuggets. Um, and then at the one, I'm going to keep Milwaukee there. They got lost pretty bad to Miami, but a loss is a loss in the NBA. Sometimes they just didn't play well. They, it was Miami's opening night. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. They blew out Brooklyn on opening night. They they won last night versus. Oh, or two nights ago versus San Antonio. So, I, I mean, Milwaukee's going to be fine. Uh, they look good. They have a couple of injuries. Jordan Nawara, I was saying last week, he's going to be a great player. Uh, Chris Middleton came out in an interview last night and said that he he's his favorite player on their team, which is weird to me. Why would you have a favorite player on your own team? If Like, why wouldn't it be yourself? Um, he has He's his favorite player on the team. He says he's going to be he's gonna be in the league for a while, and he's going to be uh, – a name that people are gonna to want to get to know. So I, I like I I liked Jordan Awara coming in, and he's you know his teammates he's getting his teammates respect as well. So that's good to see. Um. Yeah, some other NBA stuff I kind of wanted to talk about. I kind of want to talk about the Timberwolves. I said a week ago, if the Timberwolves could stay healthy between Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, you know, and them boys, they were gonna have. A shot to kind of make some noise, you know, this year. And to start the year, I, I said last week, uh, I think they started their, their opening game. All three of their guys uh, dropped 20. Let me go back and double check. So they had the Rockets on opening night. And it was 22 from Russell, 29 from Ant-Man, and 22 from Cat. Ant and Cat, that's kind of funny. Um, so they, if those three guys can just stay healthy and they can keep it flowing with them, um, and then this, and then they played just the other night. They had 25 from Cat, 19 from Ant, and 12 from Russell. If they can, if that big three, I don't like their depth with this team. I definitely don't like their depth. They got a whole lot of unproven guys for sure. But the Timberwolves, they've got a shot. I definitely think they do. Inexperienced for sure. But D'Angelo Russell. Let's not forget that D'Angelo Russell was an all-star a few years ago, led Brooklyn to the first round, and made noise. Like, people forget how elite D'Angelo Russell was a couple years when he was, you know, the head of that Brooklyn team before they just blew that whole thing up. I, you know, I am a huge D'Angelo Russell fan. I love D'Angelo Russell. When he got traded to the Warriors, I was so hyped. I was like, yes, D'Angelo Russell is going to be a part of a winning team, winning culture. You know, and then, you know, they traded him, signed and traded him. But I still like the combination of those three players you know cat has been through a lot in minnesota for a while and so i think finally you know years later he's finally got the pieces to finally help him evolve and just have success you know because the timberwolves haven't had success in a really long time so this is a year for sure i think that the timberwolves are going to make some noise and i like their chances for sure as far as improving at least improving from where they were a year ago but I, like I said, they've got to stay healthy. If they don't stay healthy, there's not a whole lot on their bench that's going to be effective. If 
if say car you know even just if D'Angelo Russell and Ant go down, that's just I mean uh, they'll have a whole lot of depth for them. Um, the Hornets uh, they have kind of I've watched all their games because the Hornets are just fun to watch, and then I'm a huge Lamelo Ball fan. They're Miles Bridges though it has has been the has been it for them. You, I, you know, you think the the Hornets are three and zero. You think, oh, you know, Lamelo must be pretty well, must be playing pretty well. It's not even Lamelo. Um, they they came back from oh what they they were down on opening night to the Pacers. It had to be twenty plus. They were down bad to the Pacers. That was the night that it was Lamelo. Lamelo had thirty one that night. He had seven. So it's seven for nine from three. Balled out that night. Gordon Hayward had twenty seven on opening night. But since that opening night um, comeback win, it has been all Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges, I always thought, you know, fun, high-flying guy, kind of like a a Derek Jones Jr. kind of guy. Uh, let's let's see, can I think of like a better? Just an athletic, long, talented defending guy that could um, shoot the ball just a little bit, you know. Uh, he had 30 against Cleveland in their second game. Uh, and then I think last night against, uh, let's see, who did they play last night? Last night against, oh yeah, Brooklyn. He had 27 again, if I'm not mistaken. He, I mean, just, he, uh, he had, oh, he had 32. He had 32. So he had 30 their second game and 32 their, their third game. Miles Bridges has been kind of the, the guy here. Uh, Kelly Oubre, I know he had a good first game too. They're, if they're, young guys can kind of get into their own form. I, I liked the mellow ball coming into the year to be um, the most approved player of the year. I thought he could easily go from averaging 16 a year ago to like 24 this year. Uh, Miles Bridges, though, geez, if he could become an elite scorer, Miles Bridges had always been kind of a shot taker, like I was saying earlier, but he wasn't much of a shot maker. Um, he liked to shoot the three, but he wasn't shooting it at a very efficient rate. He was just, you know, he would get a lot of inside lobs, a lot of close to the to the, to the basket uh, scores, but he wasn't really shooting it well from outside. Now he's shooting it well from outside. If he can continue to shoot it, you know, like that from outside, well, maybe the Hornets are a lot scarier than I even thought they were. And so that's, you know, a great start for, for uh, the Hornets for sure. Um, last kind of NBA thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, Shea and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Shea is going to be, he just signed a long-term deal, which I thought was really interesting because they don't, I don't, he's def definitely banking on this fact that they have, what do they have, like 25 draft picks or something like that, something crazy. They have a whole, it's obviously not 25 draft picks, I'm exaggerating, but they have a whole lot of draft picks coming up for this next couple of years. And Shea's kind of maybe bagging on the fact that, hey, we're going to get some really talented guys coming in here the next couple of years. I just have to endure some, some tough years. They had a close game last night against the Sixers, but the Sixers, like I said, they have a lot of noise going on around them right now. Um, just a quick note on that, that, Ben Simmons finally went and told uh, Brooklyn management that he feels he's not ready to play mentally. He feels he's not mentally strong enough to play, which is what I would say probably too. I don't know why he didn't just say that from the beginning. You know, he obviously when you mentally, when you attack that guy, the way that the organization, you know, the head coach, his teammate did and stuff like that. I just don't, I, would, I wouldn't be mentally there either. You know, the city of Philadelphia doesn't like him. His head coach, you know, said what he said. Joel Embiid, a week ago, said, I don't care about that guy. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to babysit. I'm here to, here to play winning basketball. You know, he said that a week ago. And then on opening night, he comes out and says, you know, let's support Ben. That's my brother or something, right? On opening night, he, they gave Joel Embiid the mic to just kind of talk to the fans. And that's, that's what he said. He said, that's my brother, Ben Simmons. Let's support him. Even though a week ago he said, you know, I don't, I don't care. That guy does, that does, he, he does whatever he wants. You know, it was, you know, definitely probably management came to Joel and said, you know, hype him back up. You know, we don't need you saying stuff like that. Um, <laughs> so that's interesting. But back to the Thunder. Um, Shea's playing well himself. 
Um, Josh Giddy, their 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 uh, rookie from this year, has started the uh, the season uh, better than I expected. You know, I, I thought there are some people speaking about Josh Giddy saying, you know, this kid's a pretty good pickup for them. I didn't really like it, but he's he's playing good. Um, but it's just a whole lot of young guys on this team. You know, Dort, Basley, uh, Basley, they have their veteran in Derek Favors, but then it's Josh Giddy, Kenrich Williams, uh, another veteran, Mike Muscala, Robinson Earl, Theo Maladin, Trey Mann, and then just so much, a whole lot of young talent there. Um, so a whole lot of young, unproven guys for the Thunder. It's going to be a long season, I think, for them. Poor, you know, I just feel bad for Shea. They lost to 30 by 30 to the to the Hornets who are not a very good team in you know in their rights either so it's I don't know I I didn't like that Shea signed a, a long-term extension to them but like I said they've got a whole lot of draft picks coming up maybe he's just banking on the fact that they can they can make the improvements in the future and he's just gonna kind of hang on there um but with that being said that was kind of like my week one overview for that for the NBA, um, I tried as to the best of my ability to try to watch all the teams. Um, I just found out I have Sling TV, and I just found out that Sling TV has every team's channel, if that makes sense. So, uh, you know, all thirty NBA teams, every time they play a game, it, it's on Sling TV. So I can kind of literally just do a little NBA red zone type thing, and I can flip back and forth between games. And so I'm, I've been taking the full advantage of that, and. Uh, Really trying to make sure I, I know what I'm talking about when I'm talk, uh, talking to you guys and making sure that I can give you guys honest opinions about the teams and individual players and how they're playing and stuff like that. Like, trying to watch the, as many games as I can. Like I said, like, I can sit down and I can watch Cole Anthony drop 29 and 16 and 8 and, and, you know, watch guys like that that, you know, people probably aren't watching the Magic Knicks game, but I am, and I'm trying to learn about the players and see what's going on there, so try to keep up on the NBA as best I can for you guys. 